Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing a seascape in oils. If you haven't already, please check the description box below. It will have a list of all the materials that I use that worked for me, as well as my canvas prep for this painting. So I have never painted a seascape before and decided I wanted a little bit of a challenge. And let me tell you, this one is a challenge. Um, there was a lot of ups and downs with it with this painting. I tried my best. I couldn't get my sketch to show up on canvas, so I had to freehand it all, which wasn't a big deal. Um, but if you painted maybe your background a little bit of a lighter color, it may have shown up better for you if you decide to sketch it instead of freehand. Um, now here I'm just establishing all of my values and that's because I didn't have a sketch to go by on my canvas so I needed a kind of a structure to go off of and see the bigger picture. So I'm just using a variety of different blues with a small flat brush and really just trying to get some forms in there. I'm not worried about any of the detail it's really I'm just putting it in very loosely right now. <clears throat> and I am mixing a little bit of Galkide Medium into this layer and that just helps speed up the dry time as well as it, it keeps to the fat over lean rule. Whenever you're painting with oils you want to make sure that your bottom layer of oil paint is going to be thinner so that it dries faster than what your top layer does so that way it doesn't have it doesn't give you any cracking or bubbling or anything when the paint finally cures. So here I'm just again it looks like I'm going in with straight white but I'm not even rinsing my brush in between so it's really just more of a really light blue and it's just I, it doesn't even matter what color it is I just need the values to be correct. So I'm laying in the foreground now and you'll see later on in the video that I go back to the foreground quite a bit and that was the most troublesome area for me because there was so much going on. It was really rough in that area. It was hard to see on my reference photo and it was just there was just so much information on the reference photo. I ended up just kind of doing my own thing with it. And don't be afraid to do that. If you, you know, as long as you keep your values in check, you can make this into whatever you want. I could, you know, I could put rocks all in the foreground. As long as I keep my values in check, it's all going to look like it goes together. And I was glad that I used the color that I used for the underlayer, which I believe was burnt sienna. And that was an acrylic paint and that really helped bring up some warmth because this whole painting is very it's it's a very cool color so you can see what I did there I just laid down a piece of paper towel I was doing this all in one sitting and I was pretty impatient and what that whenever I lay that paper towel down like that it's just soaking up any of the excess oil and it allows me to get a little bit farther on the painting that day you don't want to rub the uh, the paper towel into the painting because it'll just smear it and mix and make mud. So I just gently lay it down and then pat the oil directly off of it and pull it straight off. So here I'm trying to add some more visual texture, just give it a little bit more motion. And use whatever blues you have on hand. I will list the description of what I used, but you could honestly use whatever you had and just make it work that way. As long as all the colors are in harmony, then you're good to go. And I'm still using the same flat brush. I used that for quite a while. And that just helps me to keep things loose and not get distracted by all the detail. And I believe this painting I did in about five different sittings, letting it kind of dry in between. And that really helps. Once you start get once you get so much paint onto the canvas, you really need to let it dry. Otherwise, it's just gonna cause more of a pain. It's gonna cause more of a mud. So just step away for a day or two, let it dry, and come back to it. So here I switched to a round brush and 
some of the textures that I put in with the flat brush, I'm actually going through and smoothing that out a little bit. Because it was put in so loosely, it just kind of gives it a softer effect. And there's no paint on this round brush that I'm using. So I'm using it similar to like you would use a mop brush. And then I'm, I'm using a regular mop brush and that's just to knock down any paint that I see that's gonna add a little bit too much texture to the painting. So I'm, at this point, I'm still going in and adjusting all of my values. I'm paying close attention to my reference photo. And the reference photo I got off of pexels.com. And it was a really pretty, the colors just drew me into that one. I wanted something bright and summery since it's so cold here now. So again, just adding in some deeper blues, slowly building up detail. And this is the area that was the hardest part for me because there was so many foam patterns going on. I My eyes did not want to follow it. And I, like I said, I followed some of it, but a lot of it I just kind of made up on my own. And since I've never painted foam before, it took quite a while for me to figure out what brush really worked for me and what technique was going to work for me. And that really just comes with experience. Somebody could have told me that this brush, certain brush would have worked best, but honestly, everybody paints differently. And so I tried a lot of the brushes that I thought a lot of other people were using and they didn't work for me. So I suggest just practice, do a small piece with some foam patterns on it and practice what brush to use and the result that you'll get from that brush and see which one you like best. So now I'm kind of going in and any of the underlayer that's showing through, I'm kind of trying to fill some of that in. That burnt sienna, which really helped warm up such a cool painting, was showing through quite a bit. So I'm just kind of adding in more, more paint into some of those areas, really trying to just fill everything in before I let it dry for the day. I'm going in with some more light color. It's not pure white and it is mixing with the color underneath. You don't want it to be pure white. You don't want to take your values to the extremes until the very end. And here's where I'm starting to add in a little bit more detail. I have a smaller round brush that I am able to get some texture and movement into the painting. You're going to get the most depth out of your paintings if you do it in layers. So, and also it helps your eyes kind of adjust. It gives you a little, your eyes a little bit of a break. You come back the next day or the next couple days and you're able to kind of see it through different eyes. But those layers that you're putting on top, they each kind of th show through and you'll see at the very end, I kind of go use like a dry brush technique to kind of tone down some areas and brighten some up. And I'm constantly putting in these details and then going over it very, very lightly. Um, you don't want any pressure when you're using the mop brush, but I'm going over it with the mop brush just to kind of soften everything down. So here's the next day when it is a little bit more dry. Some areas were still tacky. They weren't completely dry, which is fine, but I'm going in and trying to work on my coloring now.
And if you guys try this painting, please, if you post it onto any Facebook or Instagram, can you hashtag it as Boz Art Tutorials? I would really love to see any of your guys' um, tries at this. I really struggled with this. This one was a challenge for me. And I would really love to see your guys' renditions of it. So here I am taking kind of a lighter teal color and just starting to work my way into the foreground. But I also take that color and pull it backwards so that there's a harmony between the background and the foreground. When you're oil painting, I think the most common mistake that people make is they, the lack of patience. Um, it's really important to really know when it's time to stop and let it dry for the next day. If you don't, you're going to run into more issues. It's, it, it's going to become a muddy mess and your details will slowly start slipping away. So you really want to, if that's one thing that you want to learn about oil painting is when to stop and when to let it dry. It is a longer medium, so it does take longer than acrylics or pastels. Uh, the dry time is really quite long, but you can get around that a little bit by using some different mediums like Galkide medium or um, some liquid. That's a good one too. Those are fast drying mediums that kind of help ease that dry time. But you do get really beautiful blended results when you use oils instead of acrylics. And I just love the buttery feel that you get from using oils. They're so much easier, I find, than acrylics. As long as you learn when to stop and let it dry, and as long as you learn, you know, some basic things about the fat over lean rule, then they are really a lot of fun to use. So now I'm using a round brush and I'm just kind of blocking in some of my details towards the background area. And you'll see I kind of adjust some of this. I'm putting it in a little lighter than what I am wanting my finished result to be. And that's because I know that I'm going to be going back over this once this dries and adjusting my values even more, but at least my details will still show through. And I'm using a liner brush now just to kind of get some of those breaking waves that I see, some of those droplets of water. And I'm paying attention to my reference photo to see where, if I stand back from my reference photo, I can see where the lightest areas are. So in those areas, I'm, I am applying a thicker coat of lighter paint just to make that area a little bit brighter. And standing back from your reference photo is very valuable. You can definitely block out the darker, or you can definitely see the darker areas and lighter areas more clearly when it's not obstructed by all the details that your eyes are seeing when you're seeing it up close. So if you're having trouble establishing your values, definitely step back from your reference photo. You can squint one eye, that helps as well. And that just helps to blur out any details that, you, that your eye might get caught up in. So now I'm going in with a smaller fan brush and just trying to get different textures in these uh, splashes. I did. It was looking too uniform, so I'm turning my fan brush in all different directions, trying to get different patterns and textures in there. Still using a very light color, which you'll see at the end, I go back through and kind of adjust my va values again. Again, trying to add some texture and motion to the foreground area. 
which was really difficult to follow in my reference photo. So I just kind of followed the values instead. Instead of the details, I just kind of followed where the lightest areas were. And so I was taking the paint and adding, you know, a lighter color, heavier in one area than another color. And one thing that I did do wrong that I wish I had changed was before I went in with this layer here, I would have liked to have deepened the under layer where the rocks are and showing through some of the um, foam areas. That would have made it a little bit easier in the long run if I would have just kind of painted those in a little bit darker because I lost a lot of that when I did the foreground and started putting in the blues. If I would have painted that just a little bit darker, it would have been a little easier for me to see. And if you guys are enjoying these tutorials, please like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook at BozArt or on Instagram at BozArt as well. And again, if you do any of my tutorials, I would love to see them. Um, you can hashtag it as BozArt Tutorials. And I'm always open to feedback as well. Uh, I think as artists, we are always learning and always developing our skills. And so if you have any helpful hints, please pass them along. So here I'm really trying to work on this rock area, trying to make it, give it a little bit of a wet look and add texture using a small round right now. So I'm using that flat brush and I'm trying, I decided, okay, I'm going to try this and try to get some of those foam patterns in there. And it, it was really difficult for me to try and get the right shapes. There were so many, uh, there was so much information in this reference photo and it wasn't a straight flat area. There was, it was, you know, rocks underneath it. So the water's turning over the rocks. So it proved to be really difficult. But honestly, I think there isn't a certain brush that I would recommend. You really, you just have to try it for yourself and see what is going to work for you. I mean, I was happy with the end results, but it was definitely a rough road getting there. But that's what I loved the most about this painting is that it was such a challenge and that I did it. I completed it. So now I'm going back in trying to add some more depth and texture and movement to this back area, adjusting my values even more. And you don't want a lot of paint on the brush at this point. And I am not using any medium in this brush or in this paint. And that's to follow the fat over lean rule. But having too much, um, having too much paint on your brush is just going to result in muddy colors and a more frustrating painting process. So stick to light layers. So I'm tightening up a little bit on the brush, just trying to get a little bit more detail in there. In this layer, when I started this, the background that I was doing just now, the painting had dried. It had had probably a couple weeks to dry because of the holidays. And I, my frustration with this painting, I kind of let it sit in time out, if you will, um, and really just kind of thought about what, how I was going to approach this. But um, it had t had time to dry, so now I'm really able to get that depth that I'm wanting with a darker color. It's not blending with any of the paint that's underneath it. 
and I can really work on my details because I'm able to put my hand, rest my hand on the canvas. If you have a mall stick, that'll work too, but because I usually work with acrylic paint as well, I'm so used to just using the canvas as my rest to steady my hand. So I'm just, I'm building up all of the details now, really just working each area at a time, kind of fine tuning everything, reshaping where it needs to be reshaped, paying closer attention to my reference photo. And like I said before, this is a very challenging uh, painting to do, but that's not to say that you can't make your own rendition of it. You can, any, the only way that you're going to advance in your art is by doing hard paintings. If you stick to beginner tutorials all the time, you're not going to advance. You're going to always be a beginner because that's what that's what you're used to learning. So I suggest advancing your skills by trying it. Trying something that you think that you could never do and persevering and really stepping out of your comfort comfort zone and pushing yourself. If you if it takes you, you know, 3 months to finish a painting, then it takes you 3 months to finish a painting, but it will be worth the knowledge in the end. So just keep pushing through. I learned so much in this painting about painting seascapes um, and just painting water in general. I learned so much and I think it's it was probably the best choice that I made was to pick this difficult painting to do. And I chose to keep it like the reference photo. You don't have to. If you want to make your challenge the wave, if that's what you see as the most challenging, then do the wave and make everything else, you know, the, the very background and the foreground. Simplify that area. But definitely try to challenge yourself in your art. It's really impo important for learning, for advancing. And don't be afraid to try different techniques. You'll see that I used a variety of different brushes and techniques throughout this whole thing and especially in the foreground because I was trying to learn how to get the results that I wanted and what brush was going to work for me. And when you're oil painting, you can see I used a small blender brush. That's actually a makeup brush, and I prefer those over um, like the regular mop brushes. They tend to not shed like regular mop brushes do, so that's just like a little eyeshadow brush or something. But when you're oil painting, you want to have blender brushes available because the paint does, it will build up and add texture, like feel texture on the, um, painting and sometimes that's not the look that you're going for or if you know you're going to be reworking that area you don't want to let it dry with that texture because when you go to rework it it's going to be really difficult to get a flat feel for it so definitely have a lot of blender brushes handy so here's where I'm starting to work the foreground and like I said there was so much going on that I really was just trying to step back from my reference photo and see where my lightest areas were and my darkest areas were. And you can see I moved to the rock because I got frustrated with the results that I was getting and needed to move on away from that area for a little bit. And I'm trying to make this rock look as if it's wet so that I can put um, some foam patterns on the top of it. And so you'll see me do kind of a reflection where I pull down. And that kind of gives a, an easy reflection to make it look like water. So now I'm, tr I'm trying to add in some darker areas of where the underlying rocks are just so that I can visualize everything and trying to adjust my values, seeing if that's going to help. Uh, 
And that's the nice thing about oil paint is that you can lay down an area and with one brush stroke, you can change the direction completely even after, you know, 10 minutes of it sitting there and you decide, I don't want it to flow that way. I want it to flow this way. You just put your brush down and swoop it the way that you want and it, without even any paint on it, and it will change the direction. Uh, so you can, oil paint is really nice for beginners just because you can, it's easy to play with it a little bit more than what acrylic paint is. So here I'm taking a liner brush and I'm really trying to put in some really delicate foam patterns on top of this rock. You'll see in a minute that I'll go over right now with a uh, blender brush and that's just to soften some of the lighter areas. And here I'm trying the liner brush, trying to get some more delicate foam patterns in there, but I felt like it was just turning out to look more like lightning and that's not what I wanted. So I stepped away and started working on other areas of the painting. So now I'm going back through with a flat brush, just trying to adjust bigger blocks of values, lighter areas, that way it can determine some of the motion of the water, seeing if that would help me. And it looks like it's a white color on there. It's actually not. Um, once this had dried, I put in a little bit of burnt sienna into my white to just kind of warm up the white a little bit. So you don't want to use any straight white. Uh, at the very end, I kind of go in with just a tiny bit here and there of straight white, but that's it. Other than that, I didn't use straight white at all. And that's really important, otherwise it can wash out your painting quite a bit. And right now it's just kind of fine tuning everything. I have a lot of the details in there except for the foreground. Uh, I have a lot of the details already in there, so now I'm just kind of amping up some of the color in some areas. So I wanted to take my uh, fan brush and kind of get some splash patterns in there because you don't want it to be, you don't want to use the same brush throughout the whole painting. It kind of becomes monotonous. Uh, your painting will look monotonous that way. So using different uh, brushes kind of yields different textures, visual textures to the painting and that's really important. So just play around with different kinds of brushes, different sizes. And here it really worked well for creating some splash patterns. I was able to get some sm some really small, tiny droplet looking areas and that's what I wanted. So I decided to try the fan brush in the foreground to see if that would work. And although I did like the results, you'll see that I end up kind of blending most of it out and starting over as you will. just kind of uh, bringing my values back to center so that they weren't quite so harsh. So 
So I felt like the foreground was a little bit too bright, too white in color. Uh, even though it wasn't white, it was there was just so much of that light blue color that it needed more depth. And I really needed to be able to show the rocks underneath. And this is where I had wished that I had done all of this prior to putting in any of the lighter color on top. If I had deepened that in the beginning, it may not have been quite as difficult to achieve the result I was looking for. And here's where I kind of blend everything out and decide there's too much texture going on. I didn't, there was too much movement. It needed to be smoother for me to put in harsher details, more distinct details. So I just go through and blend everything until it drops everything down in value. And then I can start adding in some darker, really dark areas and some really light areas. Still trying to establish that form of the rock underneath the water. And that really, once I got that depth in there, that really was what helped. That, you know, once I got that darker value in there, that really helped pull everything together. Just adjusting the values on the rocks as well. Now I'm taking my liner brush and I've flattened it out so that it's more square tipped. And this is what worked for me in creating some of those foam patterns. Some of those really fine lines, but they were flat. And that's hard to get with just a round brush or a flat brush. And this color that I'm putting on is kind of a dark, it's, it's a mixture. It's almost like a dark or a light gray and getting those in. Then I can go back through with a lighter color and add another layer of dimension on top of that. And that's what really worked. You need a few different colors in your foam pattern in order to give it that dimension. And these are the very final details that I'm working on. I saved the foreground for the last, mainly because of my frustration with it. I was just wasn't ready to deal with it. But these are the very final details and these are where you can kind of put your own spin on things, put as much of the foam pattern in as you want or leave some out. That's completely up to you. So here I'm using a a mixture of the lighter golden color just to add some warmth to the brighter areas and I'm just picking out certain areas in the foam pattern. I'm not applying it to all of it, just certain areas to give it a little bit more dimension. And you can see that really brings a three-dimensional look to the painting. It's a very necessary step to do. And that's why you save it till the last, the very end. Just adding brighter areas all over the painting. Just the very final, final details. Now I'm going back in with some brighter colors and thicker paint and really amping those up. And those are the very final highlights that I do. I hope you enjoyed this guys. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and please like and subscribe. Thank you.